Hi there, I'm Darren McDermott bringing you Wednesday's Targets in Focus. Today I have Annette Bacher, Head of Asia Pacific Research on the line to discuss the Antipodes. So Annette, during Asia's Wednesday session, the Australian dollar traded lower against its US rival as traders await June trade data from China. Now can you tell me more about the trading patterns we are witnessing? The Aussie dollar had actually quite a wild session. Uh, it, it opened up reasonably positively as uh, the markets are digesting the better earnings reports uh, out of the US and, uh, and the commodity currencies, the Aussie and Kiwi, actually outperformed overnight. Uh, however, it then range traded heading into the Chinese data and the headlines were, were just dreadful, uh, to, to put it mildly, in terms of both imports and exports falling for the month of June as opposed to uh, expectations of increases for both. So the, the sticker shock sent the Aussie dollar to the lows of the day down to 91.20. And from, from then on in, some of the details were actually not too bad, um, particularly imports from Australia are still quite robust. So the Aussie dollar proceeded to trade much higher over the next couple of hours. Uh, so it, it really was quite a, a, a weepy session on, on really uh, not much new news. But in, in terms of the, the Aussie outlook, uh, there seems to be some near-term consolidation um, at around the, the 91, 92 level. But I, I think going forward, uh, the, the, the cards are stacked against the Aussie dollar. There is the combination of the Reserve Bank of Australia being paused, uh, poised to cut interest rates at the same time that the US Federal Reserve is poised to taper. So our year-end forecast uh, is 89 Cents and heading into next year, we're looking at 87, 88. We, we certainly aren't looking for a precipitous fall in the Aussie dollar because the economy is still reasonably sound uh, and the outlook is still reasonably sound for the Australian economy. But, in, but the days of uh, trading above parity are well and truly behind us. And now looking at the Aussie compared with its euro counterpart, what economic news out of Europe has affected this pair? What we've been seeing is a lot of unwinding of the Euro-Aussie trade just for the fact that uh, Draghi uh, and the ECB more broadly have really surprised the markets with its lower for longer mantra. Uh, the ECB did somewhat break away from tradition uh, by putting a contingency uh, on, on the outlook for interest rates. Uh, the, the, that central bank tends to steer away from such guidance. And, uh, and I guess with the ECB uh, promising lower for longer, uh, and given that that's also what the, the RBA are looking at as well, we've seen some big shifts uh, in that cross uh, recently. And, uh, and in fact, our, our forecast for Euro Aussie are to actually range trade at, at current levels because I think the, the RBA is certainly poised to cut in the coming months. I don't really mind whether it's August or November. It does depend on the data flow and the timing uh, of the federal election. And at this stage, we don't really think the ECB is in a position to actually lower the cash rate or, in fact, start to entertain negative cash rates. But I do think that the, the ECB is really distancing itself from the U.S. Federal Reserve and, uh, and is talking about lower rates uh, rather than the U.S., of course, talking about higher rates down the track. And finally, during early Asia trade, it was a very busy day for the Kiwi dollar. Can you tell us more about the performance of the Kiwi dollar and also share with us your views and outlook for the Kiwi yen? Well, the, the Kiwi dollar is actually our, our standout uh, trading recommendation uh, against the, the US dollar, the yen and the Aussie in particular. It's, uh, I guess, in a, in a sea of, of data disappointment, the, what's coming out of New Zealand continues to print on the upside or at least match already positive expectations. I mean, this, this week alone we've found out that the housing market for June is still uh, performing particularly well and with number one city Auckland's house prices almost reaching 20% year on year. So the, the housing market is very hot uh, in New Zealand and that's really the number one focus for most analysts as well as the central bank. And also a, a contrast that we noticed this week between Australia and New Zealand is Australian business confidence and conditions are actually at recessionary levels, uh, whereas the very next day New Zealand released its business confidence for the June quarter and a net balance uh, accelerated from plus 23 to plus 32, whereby anything 
over zero is considered to be a positive. So for us, we really do prefer the, the Kiwi dollar. Uh, the the RBNZ should be in a position to lift the cash rate, which in New Zealand is a record low uh, of 2.5%. Uh, however, the central bank is very aware uh, that the Kiwi dollar is outperforming its, its major trading partners. It's a uh, much, much higher than, than long-run fundamentals. I mean, the, the Kiwi dollar is sort of sitting uh, around about 79 cents, whereas its extreme long-run average is actually closer to 60. Uh, so the RBNZ are, are doing almost anything to avoid lifting interest rates, but to us that just delays the inevitable. The housing market is, is far too hot. The GDP is looking like reaching about 3% this year. Uh, which is going to outpace uh, even number one trading partner, Australia. So a, a Kiwi is our preferred trade. Uh, we certainly have it outperforming the Aussie, and that's our, our biggest uh, trade recommendation. We've got that pair uh, sort of changing from 116, 117, all the way down to probably 113 uh, over the next six months or so, just as the, uh, the RBNZ are in a position to start lifting uh, the cash rate even though they're trying to uh, put off that recommendation as long as possible. And in particular, uh, against also a top trading partner, uh, the yen, we do know that the yen is sitting at around 100 uh, at this stage. That is on track uh, with our current three- and six-month outlook. But over the next year, we have it slowly depreciating through to 1110. So in, in terms of the, the big moves uh, over the next 12 months, we think it's going to be Kiwi yen. Thank you very much, Annette, for that. Well, viewers, that is it for right now. But tomorrow, I will be back to take a look at Brazil's rate decision as a rate hike is expected to happen. So let's see if it does. See you then.